every day is your last. Kathy did the same thing every day, and she didn't mind too much. She wakes up at 6 a.m. every morning, eats cereal, goes to school, and then goes home. She has a few friends, but she doesn't hang out with them outside of school. Kathy usually just reads books and watches TV shows when she has free time. Kathy was walking to school as she usually does. All of a sudden, a car hit her. Kathy was knocked out with blood everywhere. She went to the hospital, and her family and friends visited her. The doctor told them that Kathy was miraculously alive, even though she was hurt pretty badly. She was perfectly fine. Kathy's parents and friends kissed Kathy. Kathy felt very lucky. She decided that she would live like every day was her last. Every day she tried to do something meaningful, and every day she wrote in a diary. The day after getting discharged from the hospital, Kathy tried a new ice cream flavor. She usually gets vanilla, but she tried chocolate fudge and loved it. She also went skydiving. At school, Kathy started joining more clubs. In a weird way, she was glad she got hit by a car. Food from outside. Vicky works at Eleven Men, a cafe that serves coffee and pastries. She does not really like her job, but it gets the bills paid. One of the rules at the cafe is not to bring food from other restaurants into the cafe. Vicky greeted one of the customers. She noticed that the customer had something from Panda Express. However, Vicky didn't say anything because she didn't think it was a big deal. Vicky's boss, Angelica, called her over. Vicky, you need to tell her about our rule about food from other places, she said. Vicky nodded and went over to the customer. Hi, I'm sorry, but you cannot have food from other restaurants here, Vicky said. But it's not like I'm not ordering from you guys. I just want something to drink with my meal, the customer said. You can come in after you finish your food. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, Vicky said. The customer was furious. He got up and knocked the table and chairs down. This is a terrible cafe, he said. All the other customers and employees stared at him. The angry customer left and wrote an angry review on the cafe. The owners of Eleven Men decided to change the rule so that people could bring in food from other places if they still buy something from them. A new look. Laura always had really long hair. It went all the way down her back. It was difficult to maintain. It took her twenty minutes to wash her hair. It was also hard for her to exercise since her hair was always flying around everywhere. Laura decided to cut her hair all the way to her ears. She wanted very short hair. She also wanted to donate her hair to cancer patients. Laura always felt strongly about cancer. Her mom died from breast cancer. The hairstylist asked Laura if she was sure that she wanted to cut her hair. Laura nodded. When the hairstylist was finished, Laura looked down to the floor. There was so much hair. Laura couldn't wait to go to school and show off her new look. When Laura met up with her friends, they looked shocked. What do you think? she asked. Her friends were silent. It looks good, one of them said. 
he was lying. During lunchtime, Laura overheard one of the mean girls say that no guy would ever want to date her because of her manly haircut. Laura was hurt, but she didn't care because she knew that she cut her hair for a good cause. Most Likable Girl Mabel was the most likable girl in school. Teachers loved her because she was a good student who always had something to say. Boys loved her because she was so beautiful. Girls loved her because she was nice and always helped them. Her siblings loved her because she was caring. Mabel just had a good impression on everyone. One day, a robber came to her house, stole all her money, and punched her when she tried to stop him. Mabel was devastated after that incident. She felt upset that someone would hurt her when she was a good person. When she returned to school, it was hard for her to talk to people. She started spacing out in class, sitting alone during lunch, and wearing the same clothes every day. Mabel's friends were worried about her. They decided to go to her house to talk to her parents. Her friends explained how Mabel was acting differently in school. Mabel's parents had no idea. They talked to Mabel and told her that the robbery had nothing to do with her. Robbers just rob houses that they feel are the easiest to break into. Mabel's parents gave her a hug. Being Home Alone For the first time ever, Gabby was going to be home alone. Her parents and little brother were going on a one-week trip to Hawaii. Gabby didn't want to miss out on school, so she had said she would stay at home. It was going to be great. She could stay up late as she wanted, invite people over, and sing as loud as she wanted to. She invited her friends, William and Agatha, to her house after school. Wow, it is so cool to have the whole house to yourself. Your parents must really trust you, Angela said. Gabby's parents trusted Gabby because she always told the truth and did the right thing. You should throw a party, William suggested. Gabby and Agatha gasped. Did you hear what I just said? Agatha said. I heard you. I just think Gabby should do the wrong thing for once and not be boring, William said. Gabby did think about it. People at school did think she was a goody two-shoes, and her parents probably wouldn't find out. Okay, I'll do it, Gabby exclaimed. Gabby invited the whole 11th grade class to her house on Friday. A lot of people came and the house was packed. It seemed like everyone was having a good time. People really liked the food and the music at the party. Eventually, however, the party got too crazy. People started yelling at each other. Things broke and neighbors complained. All of a sudden, the door opened. It was Gabby's parents. Mom, Dad, aren't you supposed to be here tomorrow? Gabby asked. We were, but we came here to surprise you with a gift, her dad said. Gabby felt guilty. First Day as a Tutor Bethany decided that she would spend all the summer earning money as a tutor. She put up flyers around elementary schools in her neighborhood. 
she was offering lessons in Spanish, French, and Italian. Bethany grew up traveling the world, so she knew how to speak a lot of languages. She would charge her customers twenty-five dollars per hour. Someone called Bethany. It was a girl asking for lessons in Italian. Bethany drove down to the girl's house on Saturday. The student lived in a huge mansion. Bethany went inside the house. And introduced herself. I'm Megan, the girl said. Bethany first started teaching her the basics, like how to introduce yourself and say thank you. Megan had a hard time pronouncing the words. Bethany repeated them until she could say them correctly. Megan started to get upset and blamed Bethany for teaching her incorrectly. Bethany was insulted. She had been speaking and writing in Italian since she was four years old. Megan, why don't you take a short break and come back to this? Bethany suggested. Hopefully, that would calm her down. Why don't you take a long break and get out of here? Megan said. Bethany left her house. She didn't need to take insults from a teenager. Meeting her boyfriend's parents. Margaret was going to meet her boyfriend's parents for the first time. She was worried that they wouldn't like her because she was poor. They probably thought she was with him for his money. She wasn't. She was with him because he was kind and funny. Margaret had to look her best. She put on her nicest dress, heels, and diamond earrings. Margaret's boyfriend Jimmy picked her up. "You'll be fine," he said. When she saw Jimmy's parents' house, she gasped. It was huge. There were two security guards at the two ends of the gate. They typed in the code, and the gate opened. When they got to the front door, the servant opened the door for them. Margaret and Jimmy went into the living room to find Jimmy's parents drinking expensive wine. It was the kind of wine that was a hundred dollars a bottle. Mom, Dad, this is Margaret. Jimmy said. Jimmy's mom looked at Margaret from top to bottom and frowned. Jimmy's dad. Did the same. Margaret was not off to a good start. The four of them sat at a dining table. Nobody said anything for ten minutes. Margaret broke the silence and said, "This is delicious." Of course it is. It's probably the most expensive thing you ever ate. Jimmy's mom said. Mom, that was really mean. Jimmy said. I'm just saying the truth, son. Margaret and Jimmy left after dinner. Margaret swore she would never see his parents again. A terrible teacher. Ms. Robbins was known around the school as the meanest teacher ever. She gave hard tests. Made fun of students and wouldn't let the students have any fun whatsoever. Why was Miss Robin so terrible? Well, she never wanted to be a teacher. She grew up wanting to be an actress. She was pretty good at it. She even had her own TV show once. The TV show did not do so well, and it ended after a year. Ms. Robbins struggled to find a job after that. Ms. Robbins only got her job as a teacher because she knew the principal of the school. They were best friends from high school. Ms. Robbins taught history. Her students were all afraid of her. One of her students, Cassidy, 
raised her hand to ask a question. Ms. Robbins, how long should our essay be? Ms. Robbins stared at her coldly and said, I hate repeating myself. Ask your classmate. Ms. Robbins was called into the principal's office. What's up? she asked. There have been some concerns over your behavior, the principal said. I know where this is going, Ms. Robbins said. Do you? Well, it has to change. I know you don't want to be here, but you can't get paid if all your students want you gone, the principal said. Ms. Robbins was more careful since her meeting with the principal. Making the Boss Angry Zoe hated her boss, Justin, who thought he was better than everyone just because he went to Harvard. He proudly hung up his diploma in his office. Zoe knew that she was smart and capable, but she could never rise up with Justin as her boss. She knew she had to work somewhere else. Zoe submitted her letter of resignation. She went into Justin's office to talk. There were pictures of himself all over the walls. There was a picture of him modeling a suit, a picture of him meeting the mayor, and more. Zoe laughed. Something funny? Justin asked. Zoe shook her head. Anyways, I was wondering why you decided to quit. You have worked here for six years and have been doing well, Justin said. I just feel that it's time to move on to bigger things, Zoe said. Oh, so this company is not good enough for you? Justin asked. To be honest, I just don't like the way you run this company, Zoe said. Justin turned red with anger. He hit his desk and started tearing down all the pictures on the walls. He left Zoe in his office and slammed the door on his way out. Zoe just laughed. No need to help others. Kimberly was very selfish. She only cared about herself and never did any favors for anyone. A classmate of hers asked for her chemistry notes and she said no. The teacher asked her to read a section of the textbook out loud and she said no. The principal asked her to pick up a piece of trash on the floor and she said no. The principal called Kimberly into his office. He asked why she was so disobedient. Kimberly said that she didn't feel the need to help others when no one has ever helped her. What do you mean no one helped you? The principal asked. Kimberly explained how she never met her mom and dad. Her dad passed away before she was born and her mom died while giving birth. Kimberly was in foster care, and her foster parents were not the nicest people. They provided food and a home for her, but that was it. The principal felt sorry for her. Kimberly asked him not to feel sorry for her because she liked that she was independent. Cash only. Eduardo went to a restaurant. It was a hole in the wall, meaning it wasn't a nice place. The restaurant was known for having delicious, authentic Japanese food. All the employees there were related to each other. Sometimes the service was slow, but that's because all the food is made fresh. The cooks make the food only when the customer orders it. Eduardo sat down. The table was dirty, but Eduardo didn't mind. 
The server asked him what he wanted to order. Eduardo ordered a salmon roll. It came out in fifteen minutes. Eduardo took his first bite. It was delicious. When the check came out, Eduardo put his credit card down. The server told him the place was cash only. Eduardo asked if he could go to the nearest bank. The server said that he couldn't trust him. Eduardo swore he would come back. The server still didn't let him leave. Eduardo first called his sister to help him. His sister was at work, so she couldn't come until night time. Eduardo called his best friend Mason. Mason was in the area, so he said okay. Mason came down and paid for Eduardo's meal. Taking a break. Martin and Kylie have been in a relationship for four years. They have already said, I love you, met each other's parents, and talked about marriage. Their friends and family are just waiting for Martin to propose to Kylie. However, they don't know that Martin has been having second thoughts about his relationship with Kylie. Martin asked Kylie to go out to dinner with him. So, this is going to be hard to hear, Martin said. What happened? Did someone die? Kylie asked. Kylie had no idea what was coming next. I want to take a break from us, Martin said. What do you mean? Kylie asked. I still love you. I just need some time to myself. I want to travel by myself, Martin said. For how long? Kylie asked. Maybe a year, Martin said. I'm not going to wait around, so we're over, Kylie said. Martin was sad at first, but as he was traveling across the world, he didn't feel too sad any more. He first went up to Canada. He really liked the donuts there. He then went to Ireland. He really liked how green it was. He then went to Italy. He really liked the buildings and houses there. Next, he went to Vietnam. He really liked the people there. After one year, he came back to the United States. He asked how Kylie was doing. They went out again to catch up. They got back together. It was clear that they still loved each other. A hot risk. It is a hundred degrees Fahrenheit in Los Angeles, California today. Toby had made plans to go hiking today. His mom told him not to go because it was too hot. Toby still wanted to go. Toby and his friends drove up to the hiking trail. When they got out of the car, they felt the hotness immediately. Toby, I'm starting to sweat already, his friend said. You'll be fine. Just drink water, Toby said. As they started walking, they noticed that the plants were all brown. They all died. There were not a lot of people hiking, either. Toby's friends started to put sunscreen on. Want some? he asked. Toby said, I don't get burned. Well, suit yourself, his friend said. As they continued walking, the trail was getting steeper and steeper. Hey, Brian, remember that one time your mom hiked with us? Toby asked. It was completely silent. Toby turned around. Brian was on the ground. He had fainted. Toby called 911. When they came, they told Toby that Brian fainted from the heat. You shouldn't be out on a day like this, the emergency response team said. Toby rode with Brian to the hospital. 
Toby even sat beside Brian while he was unconscious. An hour later, Brian was up. Toby hugged him. You're totally red, Brian said. Toby looked in the mirror and saw that his face was sunburned. The Best Donut on Earth Jenny was obsessed with donuts. She had her first donut when she was five years old. It was from a gas station. Jenny was crying, and her dad was trying to get her to be quiet. He gave her a donut, and Jenny immediately stopped crying. Jenny has tried twenty different donut shops and hundreds of different flavors. Some of her favorite donut flavors included chocolate, banana, and regular glazed. Her friend Rebecca knows how much she likes donuts, so she recommended her a place. It's called Donutty. It's known to be the best donut on earth, Rebecca said. What's so good about it? Ginny asked. They're really fresh, and they use a type of sugar that is good for you, Rebecca said. Ginny was going to check the shop out. Doe Nutty was an hour away from Ginny's house. Her brother made fun of her for driving so far just to eat doughnuts. When Ginny and Rebecca got there, the store was closed. The girls felt so frustrated. They decided to get doughnuts at the gas station nearby. It was not the best, but it was still pretty good. Stage Fright Stage fright is the nervousness one feels when speaking in front of an audience. It is extremely common. Mr. Todd tries to eliminate stage fright in his speech class. In the class, everyone is required to do five speeches in front of the class. The first speech is about the student. The students typically talk about their likes, dislikes, family, friends, hobbies, and future goals. Since it is the first speech, a lot of students are nervous. They want to make a good first impression on everyone. Mr. Todd told them to think of the audience as their friends. The second speech is supposed to persuade the audience to support a particular cause. One student talked about abortion. Another student talked about Donald Trump. For this speech, Mr. Todd advised them to make connections with the audience. People are more likely to support your cause if you make it relatable to them. For the third speech, the student is supposed to try to convince the audience to visit a particular country. By the third speech, the students were more confident. It was easier for them to talk in front of their classmates. The students felt like they were all friends with each other, even if they made a mistake. It was okay. Textbooks Textbooks are really expensive. It is funny because nobody wants them. Students just have to buy them because teachers want them to. Mr. Tan teaches an economics class, and he usually makes them buy a $200 textbook. Last year, though, one of his students tried to steal a textbook. That student got suspended. The sad thing is, the student stole the textbook because he could not afford it. Mr. Tan decided to change some things around. Instead of making his students buy the textbook, Mr. Tan made copies of the textbook and gave them to the students. This is technically illegal. 
Another teacher found out about what Mr. Tan was doing and told the principal. The principal gave Mr. Tan a warning. Mr. Tan had to come up with another idea that was legal. Mr. Tan decided to use online articles that were available for everyone to access. The students liked this idea because they did not have to buy a textbook. The principal liked this idea because it was legal. Mr. Tan liked the idea because he felt that the articles taught a lot of interesting information. Mr. Tan won Teacher of the Year award. He was respected for caring about his students' financial situation. A homeless man's past. Ricky is homeless. He sleeps under a shady big tree at the park every night. In the morning, he walks around the park and sometimes goes on the playground. He likes going on the swings, closing his eyes, and thinking about the past. His past was great. He grew up in a wealthy family. Both of his parents were doctors. Ricky went to a good school, had lots of friends, and was on his way to being a doctor. Everything was perfect. Then his parents got sued by a patient. His parents lost the case and owed the patient millions of dollars. Ricky and his family had to sell their house and move to a much smaller house. Ricky also had to move schools. Ricky's parents had a very hard time adjusting. His dad had a heart attack after one year of living in the small house. His mom had a hard time without his dad and died from stress. Ricky had to support himself. He quit school and worked at a grocery store. He eventually quit because he thought he was too good for his job. Ricky decided he would rather be homeless than work at a job he hated. Ricky had gotten used to being homeless. He had been homeless for five years, and he is now twenty-three years old. He talks to people at the park and has good conversations. He gets food from the trash can. He doesn't mind. Ricky is homeless but happy. Washing dishes. Apartment one o three. Had a dish problem. The sink was completely full of dirty dishes from two weeks ago. Nobody in the apartment wanted to wash their dishes. Also, no one remembered what dishes were theirs. It was getting out of control. There were flies flying around the dishes, and there was even some mold growing on the dishes. Everyone in the apartment knew that it was a problem, but no one wanted to do anything about it. Diane called all the girls in the apartment into the living room. Guys, we need to do something about the dishes. Diane said. I don't have time to do any of the dishes. Clary said. We all don't have time. Diane angrily said. Why don't we just split up the dishes in four? That way, it's all fair," Ella suggested. But that's not fair because some of us don't use as many dishes as others," Katie said. There was a knock on the apartment door. Clary opened it. It was their neighbor Eli. I couldn't help but overhear your argument. I was thinking maybe I could wash all your dishes for forty dollars," he said. The girls would have to pay ten dollars each. They decided it was worth it. If Eli washed them, then none of them would have to deal with it. July Fourth plans. 
The 4th of July was a big deal to the Griffins. Every year they would have a huge celebration at their house with their friends and family. First, everyone would watch a movie. Then they would eat hot dogs for lunch. Afterwards, they would play games. Some of the games they played together included tug of war, flag football, and trust exercises. After playing games, they ate dinner. Dinner was usually barbecue ribs, corn, and green beans. During dinner, the Griffins would talk about life updates and current events. The big news this year was that Lila Griffin was engaged to the CEO of a world famous company. Lila Griffin was going to be rich. She was going to move to Beverly Hills. Her uncle asked if she was going to quit her job. Lila said she would not because she would get bored staying at home. After dinner, the Griffins would watch the fireworks. They had a good view of the fireworks. This year, they decided to make their own fireworks too. The fireworks came in lots of different colors, like blue, green, and purple. The fireworks weren't as big as the ones at the park, but they were still nice. Shopping Addiction Janet has a shopping addiction. She loves buying clothes, school supplies, and electronics. If she is not shopping in stores, she is shopping online. She considers shopping as her hobby. Janet often shops when she is sad because she feels like shopping gives her power. Because she shops so much, her house was getting cluttered. Her mom and dad restricted her access to money by closing her debit and credit card accounts. They also stopped giving her an allowance. This did not stop Janet from shopping. In fact, things got even worse. Janet started shoplifting. She was really good at it, too. For clothes, she would just go into the fitting room and put them in her bag. Fitting rooms did not have surveillance cameras, so that was why she could do that. School supplies were even easier to steal. Janet just looked around her and put the pens in her pocket. Electronics were difficult to steal, so she never tried. Janet saw a necklace she liked. As usual, she went to the fitting room and placed it in her bag. When she exited the store, the alarm went off. Janet was shocked as that had never happened to her. An employee checked her bag and pulled out the necklace from her bag. It turned out that there was a security tag. Janet has a shopping addiction. She loves buying clothes, school supplies, and electronics. If she is not shopping in stores, she is shopping online. She considers shopping as her hobby. Janet often shops when she is sad because she feels like shopping gives her power. Because she shops so much, her house was getting cluttered. Her mom and dad restricted her access to money by closing her debit and credit card accounts. They also stopped giving her an allowance. This did not stop Janet from shopping. In fact, things got even worse. Janet started shoplifting. She was really good at it, too. For clothes, she would just go into the fitting room and put them in her bag. Fitting rooms did not have surveillance cameras, so that was why she could do that. School supplies were even easier to steal. Janet just looked around her and put the pens in her pocket. Electronics were difficult to steal, so she never tried. Janet saw a necklace she liked. As usual, she went to the fitting room and placed it in her bag.
When she exited the store, the alarm went off. Janet was shocked as that had never happened to her. An employee checked her bag and pulled out the necklace from her bag. It turned out that there was a security tag. Singing Competition Teresa was 25 years old and trying to get a record deal. She wanted to sing pop songs and have her name known all over the world. She had a great vocal range. In fact, she can even sing opera. Making it in the music industry was tough. It took a lot of good luck and connections to get a record deal. One time, Teresa came close to signing a deal, but it fell through when her manager passed away. Teresa saw an advertisement for a singing competition on TV. It was called The Next Superstar. The show was going to be on a major network, so millions would be watching. Teresa first had to sing in front of the three judges in Los Angeles. She bought a plane ticket immediately. She always wanted to go to Los Angeles since there wasn't really anything to do in Maine. Teresa arrived in Los Angeles and met the three judges. They sat at a long rectangular table. The judge on the left end of the table was a famous rock singer of a band. The judge in the middle was the CEO of Harness Music Group. The judge on the right end of the table was a vocal coach to many famous singers. Teresa was a little nervous. Teresa was 25 years old and trying to get a record deal. She wanted to sing pop songs and have her name known all over the world. She had a great vocal range. In fact, she can even sing opera. Making it in the music industry was tough. It took a lot of good luck and connections to get a record deal. One time, Teresa came close to signing a deal, but it fell through when her manager passed away. Teresa saw an advertisement for a singing competition on TV. It was called The Next Superstar. The show was going to be on a major network, so millions would be watching. Teresa first had to sing in front of the three judges in Los Angeles. She bought a plane ticket immediately. She always wanted to go to Los Angeles since there wasn't really anything to do in Maine. Teresa arrived in Los Angeles and met the three judges. They sat at a long rectangular table. The judge on the left end of the table was a famous rock singer of a band. The judge in the middle was the CEO of Harness Music Group. The judge on the right end of the table was a vocal coach to many famous singers. Teresa was a little nervous.